Thanks everyone for coming. Uh, this is our second, I think we're calling it presidential leadership seminar. We decided to do something a little bit different for this second event. What we decided is we were going to invite some of our prominent alumni back and uh, try to invite them back from different fields and different occupations and then have them just talk a little bit about uh, what they've learned now that they're in industry and uh, give you some, uh, some good advice in terms of what you should do as a student. Um, before we begin with the panelists, I'd like to uh, start with uh, Gary and, uh, and tell us what leadership means to you and why you think it's so important and what okay. drove you to uh, fund this effort. Leadership to you as students is a name that needs to be expanded. It, it isn't just being leader of something, it's being part of something. And it, not just as a student, but when you get out into the workplace, you learn that your interaction with the other people around you and your ability to influence them is a very important thing. It's as important as the skills that you bring to the job, getting things done. And that's how I define leadership as getting things done. And so, although you're going to hear from a lot of speakers, I hope, I, I, hope, I hope you get a chance to hear about their experiences in working with the organization that they built. Thank you, Gary. I'm going to move on and I'm going to begin with uh, Andre. Uh, Andre, just uh, briefly tell us why did you choose to go to Florida Poly? And, uh, and then also tell us a little bit about how your time here helped you prepare you for, uh, for your current position. Uh, really, the opportunity. I, as a young child, I was always interested in technology. When I was in high school, I started dabbling with some programming. And so when the opportunity for Florida Poly came up, it just made the most sense to me to pursue an education here. So um, really, the opportunities, not only with the partners in the industry, but also you know, uh, a really good curriculum uh, and a great, again, student base to, to become friends with. And I've made lifetime friends here at Florida Poly. So uh, again, I, I, I'm super appreciative of my time here at the university. Uh, and it really helped me uh, as I moved into the industry. I know an internship is required, so I definitely uh, cannot underscore how important it is to focus on getting an internship. But uh, in terms of research opportunities, as you start moving into your classes that are more focused on your concentration or your, uh, or your degree, uh, there's a lot of opportunities to build skills that aren't necessarily technical. Documenting, that's a, a big trait that I look for when I'm hiring candidates on my team. Uh, not only are they able to, to fulfill the technical qualifications, but I want to see well-rounded people. And so at Florida Poly, it really helped me become very well-rounded. Um, and you know, be able to operate on a team in the industry. Uh, so it's, yeah. it's definitely important, not only for those classes that you're looking forward to as part of your undergraduate studies, but also the people you meet, you know, how you interact with people, how you work together and collaborate on projects. All of those are skills that uh, will allow you to be successful in moving into the industry after you're done with academia. Uh, Andre has a very successful career at Disney. He went the industry route, but the other Andre went a completely different route. He went to graduate school and he continued his studies. So I'd like to ask the exact same question as this Andre. Yeah, so kind of mirroring what other Andre said, like the opportunities here from whenever I like, toured and just was reading stuff online, I kind of got the sense of opportunity all across campus, but from the sense of not necessarily just the industry connections, because I always kind of knew I liked research, but actually just being able to talk to professors and not just be like taught in a class, but more of a conversation because of the small class sizes and form relationships that actually are much deeper than the traditional what you would get in like what I got in high school where I didn't see my teachers after class and I couldn't just walk up to their room. So actually being able to talk with somebody about something of interest and get a deeper insight from like real experts in that field or at a lot of other places you don't actually get that just because the professors don't even know your name. Here, I mean, I had one class, it was just me and the professor and that, I mean, that's just a conversation. So that's kind of what drove me to come here and then that is also what allowed me to succeed where I am now because I was able to build the foundation in theory 
which is something that, from attending a lot of Dr. Raven's talks during the time I was here, building everything on the basis of theory so that it's essentially future-proof. I mean, that's just how research works fundamentally, and that's why I'm able to be successful doing my PhD now. Um, all of the uh, panelists uh, were involved in some sort or another while they were here at Florida Poly. Uh, I'll start with Isabel. Isabel, if you could tell us a little bit about what you were involved in and how you think that helped prepare you for your career. I was a very busy student here. Um, I was part of SGA. I was in the Presidential Ambassador Program. I worked at the Academic Success Center. I did research, like pretty much anything I could be involved in. I think I was for at least a month or two. Um, and it really did prepare me. Like I put myself in a lot of different situations. And I learned that I had to talk differently. I had to communicate with people differently each, uh, in each of these different situations. When people came into the ASC, I needed to talk to them as a peer. Um, nowadays, I talk to uh, other engineers as I, would, um, as I am an engineer. I also talk to people who are maybe our customers. Um, so like maybe a professor, you know, you have to elevate your conversation. You have to be a little bit more like salesperson, high level, like be super respectful of their time. Um, this kind of context switching that you don't even realize that you're learning when you're getting involved comes in handy so much uh, as you move on um, from Florida Poly and learn how to communicate in a different, bigger world. What skills do you think employers are looking for in candidates that are outside the skills learned in the classroom? And I'm gonna start with Chris Dowdy. Thank you, Randy. Uh, that's a great question. Uh, I th the first thing that pops in my mind is soft skills. So I was at, a university that would be the same Florida Poly, but in the state I live now. I was recruiting about two months ago, and a guy came up with a resume that looked phenomenal. But as you spoke with him, he couldn't look me in the eye, and he could not convey what was on his piece of paper in anything close to layman's terms that a normal person could just talk about. He was unapproachable, and it was, it wasn't a fit for our company. That's just the flat line. I, I didn't even take his, his information. Because it's not, it's not what you know, it's how you can explain that and connect with other people through it. You, you, you've got to learn to do that. Um, it's great to have technical skills, but you have to be able to communicate that. The soft skills to be able to relate to people and to be able to be comfortable talking with people. Uh, I'm grateful I did learn a lot of that at Poly. Um, I brought some of it with me. I, was, I came to Florida Poly a little later in life. But uh, through my time with the presidential ambassadors, go PAs, uh, we had all kinds of opportunity to be able to talk with people of all walks of life. My age, younger than me, business leaders, political leaders, you name it, we were talking with them. And you had to be able to talk about, I'm going to use the old term, the old toy hall, what we used to call the center hall where all the really cool labs were when I was here. We called that the toy hall. But we had to explain that to people in a way that they would understand and connect with. So, you know, we didn't need to talk about the gigabytes of the supercomputer. We needed to talk about how we were using that for research that would help people now. And, and, and being able to think that way, that changes the game as far as the industry goes. What advice would you give current students on how to make the most of their experience at Florida Poly? Networking, network, network, network. People that are sitting next to you right now might be your way to get a job. The professors that you're in class right now, might, if you wanna do a PhD, you're gonna need a lot of recommendation. So having that network, building that relationship with your peers, with your professors is very important. Um, right now, I, one of our alumni is actually at Microsoft as well and we met up for coffee and I have a couple people that got into Microsoft because of referrals. So that is my number one tip for anyone is network. Well, thank you all for coming. And uh, again, let's give a round of applause for the panel. And thank you all. <laughs>